Module 13.2, Speech Synthesis, The Vocoder and the Voter. Once researchers started to understand some of the acoustic elements of speech, they started building machines that could analyze and synthesize speech. In the 1920s, Homer Dudley, a scientist at Bell Labs, developed a device called the vocoder, which is short for voice encoder, which took speech and split it into various frequency bands. The vocoder was quickly grabbed by the military to use for encoding voice transmissions during the war. A redesigned version of the vocoder resurfaced in the 1970s and was used in A Clockwork Orange and other films, as well as by musicians such as Wendy Carlos, the Electric Light Orchestra, and Kraftwerk. With a great deal of interest in electronic manipulation of the voice, vocoders are now a popular device produced by manufacturers of electronic keyboards and software. The vocoder is essentially an application of source filter theory. It's an electronic device or software that uses two inputs. One acts as the source and the other acts as the filter. Most often, a musical instrument is used as the source and the voice is the filter. The vocoder takes the voice input, removes the fundamental frequency information, and keeps the formant information to become the filter. It then applies that filter to the source input. The result is something that sounds like a speaking or singing musical instrument, or a robotic or synthesized voice. Some contemporary musicians use it to make one voice sound like many harmonizing voices. Here's a demonstration of how it works. First, we listen to the voice input. A vocoder takes a voice input, uses the formants, and then applies those to another signal. Now let's listen to an analog synthesizer as one of the other inputs. Now, when we combine them into the vocoder, it sounds like this. The vocoder takes a voice input, uses the formats, and then applies those to another signal. Now let's use an organ as a source. Now here's the vocoder with the organ and the voice. We can also take a static signal like white noise or pink noise. Now let's see what the pink noise and the voice sound like through the vocoder. A vocoder takes a voice input, uses the formats, and then applies those to another signal. Let's now see what it sounds like with all three sources, the synthesizer, the organ, and the white noise together. The vocoder takes a voice input, uses the formats, and then applies those to another signal. You may have heard the effects of a vocoder in pop music. For example, Imogene Heap, Hide and Seek, Daft Punk, Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger, and Brad Murphy, Fox Country Soul. There are links to these songs so you can listen. The Voter The information gathered from the vocoder led to the development of the voter, a voice operating demonstrator, in the 1930s. The voter was the first electronic device that could synthesize speech. It was introduced to the public at the 1939 World's Fair. Stop this module and go to the YouTube link to hear a demonstration of the voter. The voter was very difficult to operate. Only a few people ever developed the skill to use it effectively. And because of that, its usefulness was very limited. Because of the complexity involved with speech synthesis, it wasn't until the advent of computers that voice synthesis gained a rebirth. 
Several voice synthesis programs were developed in the 1950s. Synthesized voice products became available to the public in the 1970s with some speaking calculators and the Speak and Spell toy for children. Synthesized speech is now very common with Siri, Alexa, Cortana, and telephone answering systems used by many companies. Speech synthesis programs are built into most computers. For example, dictation in speech on a Mac or text-to-speech on a PC. There are now consumer software programs that can synthesize speech and singing. There are sound examples of synthesized vocals at links provided in the info section. To review, a vocoder is an electronic realization of source filter theory. It takes the filter information from one input and applies it to the second input. In the 1930s, the first electronic voice synthesizer, the Voter, was created. With the advent of increasingly powerful computers, synthesized voices have become a part of our everyday life.